Welcome back to the show, everyone. This is Tech and Turn. If you're new to the channel, please leave a like and a subscribe and a comment introducing yourself. Um, if you get any value out of this video, if you don't get any value out of this video, let me know why not, what could have been better, and I will definitely address that. My name is Jason Goodison. I did six internships across three countries, and I have done my fair share of interviews and applications and resumes and all that kind of fun stuff. So I wanna share all my advice with you guys. One of the pieces of advice I shared the other day was about extendability. I said it was the biggest difference between interns and full-times. Interns develop code for today, full-times develop code for tomorrow. Um, and I had somebody asking me if I could elaborate more on that. DLU27 says, can you elaborate more on extendability? Does it mean software is documented well enough to be easily understood by new developers? So to answer the question, it's not as simple as just documentation. Um, I've actually made some notes about it and I wanted to share them with you guys. Uh, and there's a lot of things in here I think that it's gonna be new to you. You're gonna learn some new things that you probably haven't heard of before. Things that you can implement in your side projects that'll make you stand out on your next resume. So again, if you get any value at any point in this video, please go ahead and leave a like, leave a subscribe, uh, and share with a friend if, if you think they'll get value too. Um, that helps me a lot. But uh, the first thing I wanna talk about is well, actually, let me answer the question. So documentation and code, is that the number one thing? And no, documentation is, is important, but code nowadays is supposed to be written in such a way documentation would be redundant. The reason for this is code is supposed to be written so eloquently that it's so easy to read that any comments on it would basically just be saying exactly what the code already says. Now, there are exceptions. There are certain pieces of code. Maybe you're doing some bit shifting. Maybe there are things that you need to put a little bit of a comment on, but generally speaking, um, the code itself should be good documentation. If you've got a header file, you could put some documentation in the header files also, uh, but putting it in code every few lines, I don't think that really helps anyone, and that is not considered the gold standard. So what actually is things that interns need to consider more about extendability that they need to put on the resumes? Well, the first thing I would say is upfront cost. So I developed an application at work. Um, if you're fam familiar with React, you'll know that React, you can make components in, and you can make components in components. And then what happens is you pass props, which are kind of just parameters, to components, and you get this nesting effect. So let's say you have a prop at the very top, prop at the top, um, and you need to get it all the way down to one of the lowest nested uh, components you basically have to pass it all the way through all the components all the way down. Now, if you have a lot of props, this becomes overwhelming. We thought, you know, it might actually take us two weeks just to add this one small feature. So what we did instead is we added Redux. Redux is this incredible library. I know that there are other global state managers for React nowadays. Probably there's one that's more top of the pops, you know, the front end languages seem to change like every two years, but for me, I love Redux. Um, I think it's really easy to use. However, there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of added code in Redux up front. And you'll think, why am I doing all of this additional code? I wanna start writing the components. I wanna start seeing stuff on the screen. All of this additional code seems like a waste. Uh, it's not gonna help me at all. We're able to add Redux into this React front end and add the new feature in uh, in the same time frame that we probably would have if we had just added the one feature in. With Redux, you're able to basically have components listen to whatever data they need to listen to. The upfront cost is something I think a lot of interns rush over. They wanna get to the code. Uh, and so when you go into an interview, you'll say, hey, look, here's my side project. And the interviewer will say, great, what technologies did you use? And they'll say, well, I used Redux, or I used React. And they'll say, why? If you go in and say, uh, I don't know, I, it sounded like a good idea, that's not gonna get you a job, right? You have to say, well, you know, I considered Vue, um, but I think the combination with React and Redux is just so easy. Maybe I've developed with it professionally before. Those are all great reasons that why you would use it again, right? So basically having reasons to explain the technologies you do use and thinking about different technologies you could add in that would actually make your development much easier in the long run. That's something I think is really important. And if you could convey that on a resume or in an interview, I think that'll set you apart. Another thing people have probably heard of is uh, low coupling or high cohesion. 
Um, we do something similar where I work called Domain Driven Development. And uh, the idea behind the first two is kind of like your classes should be very modular. Um, they shouldn't have major dependencies. The high cohesion aspect, you know, being that all of the groupings of functions actually make sense. Um, a, a really great example of this in the real world is microservices. So instead of putting your whole backend application into one Node.js project, you'll make different smaller ones that will communicate with each other. Uh, so definitely in your own time, maybe research more about microservices. I can do more videos here on it specifically. That's something that's really big right now. Basically having a separation of concerns is definitely a really great thing for extendability. If you decide to do some development for Leap Party, which is the open source software we made here, uh, we have a whole class that's dedicated to just user data. We have a whole class that's dedicated to managing room data. We have these things that are separate that don't really cross each other um, and it makes the development much easier overall. Another thing I think people really miss, this is a big one. This is one you probably not really heard of is logging and metrics. So what you'll do in your own application, you'll be developing and you'll say, oh, I need to know if this fails. You'll do console.log or console.error if it's a Node.js project. If it's, if it's Java, it might be like um, print.system. No, system.out.println. Yeah, something like that. The point being that will print to the console. Now that's not great for real applications because when a real application starts to error and crash, let's say it happens at two o'clock in the morning, uh, what is that gonna do for you? The, the printing on this like computer that's th hundreds of miles from you. That's not gonna tell you anything. You're gonna be in sleep in, in bed and your application will crash and you'll never know about it. You'll have to check, it, check up on it like two weeks later and realize, oh, this thing's not working. So, so logging and metrics is really great. We use roll bar for um, Leap Party. And basically what we do is we use that logger. We send all of our basically prints to this website where we can check it at any point. Uh, another big product would be PagerDuty. We have an internal version of that at Microsoft. What that does is it calls people when things start crashing. So if it's two o'clock in the morning and things start crashing, a bunch of errors start popping up. I get a phone call and it'll wake me up. I'll answer it and it'll say, service is crashing. And I'll come out, I'll fix it, and I'll go back to bed and I wake up in the morning and nobody even realized it crashed. That's the kind of system that you want. You want it to be highly available. If you guys do some development with Lead Party, Rollbar is gonna be great for that. You can put that on your resume. I think that's a fantastic option. Um, another thing, ease of deployment. So. When you finally actually deploy your application, you're probably gonna use like AWS or Azure. And how easy is it for you to deploy? One product I love is called AWS Amplify. So if you make, like, make yourself like a React project or something, you can have AWS watch your Git repo. You can link it to your GitHub repo. And whenever you make a change to a certain branch, it could even just be master, uh, it will redeploy your application and you can have it manage all of your environment variables. I love this product because it's like, I don't even have to think about it. Uh, another solution that is free is just GitHub pages. You can just deploy your code right through GitHub pages. Uh, I haven't used it extensively myself, but I love AWS Amplify. Last thing, I think people probably have heard of this a lot actually is called test-driven development. So test-driven development, write your tests before you write your code. It's that simple. I never did it in my side projects because I was always so excited to get into the code but I think if you do that, it shows employers that you care about your, uh, your project actually working <laughs> and actually being highly available. Another thing I would say is reusability and that kind of meshes very well with limit the number of code paths that are in your application. So reusability, when I, when I went and made my first website, it was just like HTML, CSS and bare bones JavaScript. And every single page I copy and pasted the header Every time I made a change to the, pet, the header, I had to change it in every single page. That's horrible design. If you use something like React, you could make a component and you could just use the component. Uh, and that is significantly better design. Um, and also reusability kind of flows in with this idea of limiting the number of code paths. So if you are copying a bunch of code, maybe you make a change to one place, um, one user, might get in one state, might get uh, a one code path through your system. Another user might get a different code path through the system. The problem ends up being is that these two users 
uh, will have significantly different experiences if those code paths are very different. Um, and what you want to do is limit as much as possible because sometimes you want people to do different things on your website, right? Uh, you want to limit the number of code paths through your website. So reusing code is definitely a great way of kind of uh, making sure that they're all using one code path. So anyway, I, I hope you guys learned something from those things. Uh, the three things I think that people often miss, the biggest ones would be uh, the upfront cost, like of Redux, using something like that in your system, uh, logging and metrics and ease of deployment. All the other things are sort of taught in schools, but um, I think if you guys apply these to your side projects, start developing some code for uh, Leap Party also. I'll review your code. Um, this will be a great way to get these things on your resume. You could talk about these things in your interviews, and this is going to set you apart from the average Joe. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I hope you got some uh, value out of it. And if you did, please leave a like, a subscribe, and a comment if you want to just say hi or if you want to add your own opinion. I love hearing what you guys think. Um, maybe you've got a different perspective. Maybe there's something I forgot. I'd love to hear about it. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I will see you in the next one.